I graduated from high school in 1992, and I was living in I grew up in Cincinnati, Ohio, and I went to Walnut Hills High School. Senior prom, I went with my uh, one of my best friends, who was her name was Rachel, and she was a freshman in college at Indiana University, and happened to be one of maybe the two or three people that knew I was gay in some way. She wore a black. Um, dress with polka with white polka dots, and I had a cummerbund and tie that had polka dots um, that matched it perfectly. I was trying to convince myself I did have a crush on her, so there were a couple moments where I was like, maybe if I hold her tight it, while dancing with her, suddenly something will happen. Of course, nothing. The one time I did hold her tight while dancing, she was like, oh, I don't think so. Pushed me away a little further, and we had a great time. And we stayed up really late and hung out, and it was completely easy. Um, but also it was a great big secret. The prom in itself was really an easy, nice moment because it was, I could, I was safely hidden within the context of a, you know, a heterosexual little event, but they all knew. Um, so, and they all knew that this was something that this was going to, my life was going to change when I finally got the hell out of Cincinnati. This is before Clinton, before, um, the possibility of Ellen, before, uh, um, anyone, any high school student outside of Boston or New York or San Francisco could even think about the idea of coming out in high school. One of the things that I loved to do when I got to college, and it because of whatever uppityness and aristocratic hooey of Harvard, they had lots of formal dances. And I bought a tuxedo and I went to formal dances and with the exception of maybe the first one, I always went with a man. And I loved the fact that I could have a day, you know, go to a dance with a man. There might be someone there that raised their eyebrow, but it was so clear that in the culture of Boston and the culture of Harvard that it was completely fine. Uh, in fact, the only people I know who are sort of randomly upset about it at the time are now out gay men who work in media, which is kind of hilarious. The idea of going to prom, my high school prom with a guy, I can't even imagine what that must be like um, and how freeing that was and what high school would have been like if I'd been out and gay. I think maybe I like to, you know, sometimes I think about it, it's like, oh, if I'd had been distracted by a boy and like by dating, I probably wouldn't done nearly as well in high school and gone to, you know, gone to Harvard. I probably would have been like, you know, getting normal grades as opposed to devoting all of my thought and energy to getting straight A's because I had to get out. I had to go someplace where I could be safe. When I got to Massachusetts and I discovered that there were campaigns for gay youth, that there were gay straight alliances, that there were entire um, uh, mechanisms within the Department of Education in Massachusetts to help gay kids, gay teenagers, to encourage them to, you know, say it's okay, that was, it was amazing to me. And what encourages me enormously is that that sort of thing now happens in multiple states. It makes me think that if, you know, if my husband and I ever adopt a kid, and, you know, in some bizarre machination that the kid ends up gay out of whatever reason, that that is something that they'll be able to experience. Um, or if not, their friends will be able to. You know, when I talk to my freshman and I mention my husband, you know, in class, nothing happens. Like, there's no, it's like they're as bored as if I said, you know, um, you know, my dog or something like that. And that's, that is the ultimate amount of progress. 